This is a global biodiversity hotspot, and this is the wilderness section of the Garden Route National Park. What is interesting about this area, it is seen as conservation without borders. So there's an interaction of human development as well as protected areas. It is a particularly interesting area for bird life. And we found a lot of water birds in all these wetland areas. This little black winged stilt walking in the shallows. A sharp little beak adapted for being on the drier areas next to the water. The Cape teals, Cape shovelers, yellow bull ducks, able to be on the water and at the water's edges. With their flattened beaks, very good for foraging. This little egret, black long legs, yellow feet, very distinctive. We've encountered cormorants many times, both the Cape cormorants as well as the white-breasted cormorants. And we find them in their typical poses of either sunning themselves, spreading the wings, or just perched and waiting for food. And next to these cormorants is this African data with slightly longer legs, but that long elongated neck and that sharp bill. The adaptions of all these birds are to their environments and to their habitats. And for millennia, they have adapted themselves to be able to ensure that they can get the food that they require for their needs. With a little bit of help from the rain we had last week, the area has started to, to really fill up. Big open areas within the islands are just covered with this layer of water. A lot of the animals were enjoying the new shallow waters that had literally overnight covered the area. Hippos snuck back from a night's feeding inland, cutting through the ankle-deep water before burrowing back into the safety of the bulrushes. Lechwe, big herds, loving the new and wet environment happily grazed and moved just at sunrise. Ellie bulls wandered out of the tree line, moving in to feed on the bulrushes during the day. Life just moves on and it's a wonderful season in Okavango. Very, very cold and dry winter months that seem to be turned on their head by the arrival of the flood water. These shrubs here growing at the base of a line of trees go by a variety of names from the giant Indian milkweed to the crown flower to the ivory plant. But I think I prefer the Thai name for it, which would translate as love. 
It plays host to a great variety of insects and other small creatures. The crown flower is the food plant for one of our common species of butterfly, the plain tiger. And here we see a caterpillar of that species munching away. The caterpillar having a real feast on, on this flower. And then later a female butterfly actually came down right in front of me, perched on the side of a leaf. And here you can see arching her body up under the leaf to deposit eggs on the underside of the leaf surface. Small, at first sight black beetles, but when you have a close look at them you see that there's a very deep purple colour in there. There are quite a few ants also in evidence. And here we can see a pair of seed pods, very large indeed, that develop from these flowers. And here one that has opened up with a cotton-like fluff coming out. This already unusual forest scape was revealed in many moods because of the intermittent appearances of the sun through the fast moving banks of clouds. Thousands of aerial pencil roots sprouted out of the swamp, allowing the white mangrove trees access to oxygen. We noticed there was some life in the form of tiny crabs. One of them seemed to be trying to find a home in a climbing whelk shell. This first sighting of life inspired us to come back the next day and look for more. The cold front had moved on and it was a more typically warm Durban winter's day. We suspect the weather, the tides and the seasons have a considerable effect on the obvious activity within the mangrove swamp. In the summer, these banks had been swarming in claw-waving multitudes, but now we'd wait on the estuary banks for hours before we'd see anything. And then suddenly, we'd see these tiny crabs ranging from an inch in diameter to mere millimeters. Amongst the crabs we found mud skippers, which from a distance are barely distinguishable from the mud. But on closer inspection, their colourful eyes and shiny bodies are quite something else. Their eyes sit on top of their heads, and this provides them with a panoramic view. Because they have no tear ducts, they roll their eyes back into their sockets to keep them moist. Away from the water, further into the dense, mostly black mangrove forest, we found these much larger red mangrove crabs collecting the bright yellow leaves that littered the forest floor. They were tentative leaving their holes, obviously because of predators, but once they had grasped the leaf, they then scurried back into their holes at speed. <laughs> 